Hello, everyone. My name is So Young, like So Young, and I am the founder and CEO of Nobi. And today, I'm going to talk about how we're actually helping employees be more productive using digital learning 2.0. So the truth is, is how many of you have gone through corporate training on your computers, compliance, and you just want to kill yourself? Me too. So actually, we know that lots of digital learning is really about knowledge. But who cares if you know a lot of stuff, but you can't apply it on the job? So we're really focusing on the new currency, which is about skills. Because managers and companies care about whether you can do the job, not if you know about the job. Right? And so in terms of developing these skills, unfortunately, you can't learn these by watching videos. I wish that I could watch 20, 10 videos and become super creative. But unfortunately, I have to actually apply that and learn on the job. So Nobi is really about how do you apply those skills. So Nobi actually stands for grow knowledge into being. Because knowledge is not meant to stay in your head. It's meant to be applied and become part of your being. And so the question is, how do you deliver that at scale to 100,000 employees? 70% 70, 70 of us actually prefer to learn on this device. And shoot, how many of you take this thing to the toilet? Oh, we have a shy audience, because actually 80% of us do. And so imagine if we can take advantage of that time to be more productive. <laughs> so actually, in terms of the digital learning space, 1.0, the objective of learning was all about knowledge transfer and doing that at scale. So a lot of the solutions were primarily one way, web-based, you were sitting down, and you would kind of learn a lot of stuff as fast as possible. That has now evolved into the mobile space, but it's still primarily a one-way delivery. So if you're looking to actually help to share knowledge as fast as possible, you can use the digital learning 1.0, no problem. But the thing is, is that companies are looking for a 2.0 solution because the learning objectives have changed. It's now about skills, about acquisition, about mindset change, and about behavior change. So it makes sense that you would need a new methodology, right? We call that MPPG, mobile first, not web enabled, because we assume learners are on the go, participatory, personalized, and group-based learning. And that's really based on the science and research of adult learning. So how do we actually do that on this little device? We call it learn, think, apply, share. So I'll just give you an example. Let's say we're doing sales training, which is one of our biggest use cases. I can give you a little video on a new sales technique of how to actually ask open-ended questions to listen to the needs of the customer. You got a little video on that. All platforms do that. But then the real learning happens in the think, apply, share. Now that I've given you the video, I'm going to ask you, so what is challenging about asking these open-ended questions? Oh, I get nervous. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to talk all the time, right? So then I get the, you get the employees to think. Then you say, how do you apply that? And how are you going to do a video to practice what you've just learned and then share that with your team? And then your team manager gives you feedback, coaching, and then you also find out who the best guy on your team is. Of course, you're going to check his out or hers out because you want to learn from that person. So that's where you actually are then practicing that skill every single day on the job. The question, and so the way that we're doing that is we're providing a platform for self-authoring so anyone and any of you can create content anytime, anywhere. And we also, super happy to, <laughs> to announce we've launched the world's first and the only library now, the, the largest library for mobile-first learning called Nobi Learn with content partners like KPMG Business School, Mercer, academic institutions around the world to provide both the platform as well as the content through a subscription model. So the question is, does this work? The good news is that we're seeing tremendous results from our clients around the world with 90%, over 90% of learners and curators saying they love learning in the platform. We have 30% increase in sales by people who are using it, training companies. We also have 30% observation of sales behaviors or other kinds of behaviors you're trying to do by managers. So we know that it works, and we're seeing 70 to 80% cost reduction, both in the time to create as well as in productivity improvements in companies. We've done this now with actually less than two salespeople. We've organically grown to 25 countries, 100, 100 clients, and we've grown 4x last year. We're just getting started. We're very excited because we beta tested the product in Asia, and now we're ready to launch in the US this year. We'll be raising our Series A this summer. So we're excited to actually find partners to actually do that with. Our team is actually, we're blessed to have a lot of experience in enterprise learning as well as in technology. And our plans, we're going to be continuing to build out our product 
and investing in AI and machine learning for recommendations to be the Netflix of learning for the learner, but also kind of an automated curation platform for the curator because both are very, very important. So we welcome any questions. I'll be here. I uh, look forward to uh, partnering, and we're looking for uh, great investors and partners. Thank you very much. Thank you, So Young. Now to questions. Natalie, you want to start? Um, simple question. Would love to hear more kind of who you think your ideal customer looks like, what that archetype is today, and do you see that customer changing over time? And if so, kind of what does that customer look like? Sure. Um, so we're seeing the most traction actually in the financial services industry, specifically in insurance and insurance agent training, because the agents are on the go, they're on the move, they're not sitting behind laptops. So in terms of an industry, we're seeing basically anytime you have a big remote workforce, a professional is kind of the biggest industry. In terms of the target buyer within that company, we're finding the business owner because they're, they're kind of, uh, they're on the line. So it's either the sales operations manager or the distribution head or the partnership uh, head where they are actually responsible for the business results. And they tend to be the fastest close yep. and actually the, the most open to buying quickly. Started off in HR and l and was a little bit longer. <laughs> so we learned along the way. Uh, I, I can go. Um, so uh, my question was actually going to be around the go-to-market because selling to HR and L&D is really, really hard and takes a long time. Um, and so it makes sense that you're going to the business unit. Can you talk a little bit about for when you talk to customers, what is the, what do they typically compare you to? Is it the more like enhanced LMS or is it the more kind of the Grovos of the world or the degrees of the uh, world? Uh, what do they compare you to and what is the kind of secret sauce that gets them to, to choose you? Awesome question. So um, I'm super happy because we're here with our SAP.io partners. And part of why, so we're actually integrating with the LMS players. So we integrate with success factors and LMS solutions. So the LMS is kind of the systems of record. They have all the data. So we're sitting on top of that as a learning experience and a mobile first learning experience. And so that's why there's actually a kind of a collaboration because we're kind of experts at how people learn and apply that on the job. And so and the learning management systems are actually uh, more of a systems of We're systems of engagement. So we collaborate together with that. So, and, and I guess with the growth of those other worlds, because we have content as well, because a platform without the content we realize is not having as high as our, our ARPU. So if we, we just started with platform and they kept saying, okay, great, but where's the content? So then we added the content on to increase ARPU and then we're seeing actually much greater uh, adoption. Sorry. Um, first of all, great name. Love it. Thank you. Um, Hard to pronounce, though. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, um, with the content production angle, with the customers that you're seeing that are using um, this as a learning tool from their company, are you seeing those consumers create their own content with a self-published feature? Absolutely. What, is, what does that flow look yeah. like? Yeah. So um, we have over 7,000 programs um, created on the platform. It's growing about 10 to 15 percent month over month. Um, in multiple languages, uh, multiple languages, and so because the, the content creation is so easy, we are reducing the time and cost of content creation by 80, sometimes 90 percent, because what takes companies six to 12 months to roll out, you can do in a couple of hours or minutes, uh, you know, maybe a day or two on our platform, and so that's a critical part. That's why if you notice, I talk about both learners and curators, because for us, we want it to be easy for both, otherwise it's not scalable. And so we actually can do some of it, but we're teaching people how to do mobile instructional design. We've created a whole new job category because you have to think differently about instructional design on a small device. So, you, so that's why the mobile responsive stuff isn't really working very well because it wasn't designed for the phone. And so we're kind of pioneers in this whole space of mobile first. We've trained literally like thousands of people on how to curate. Uh, my eight-year-old niece, she doesn't need any training. So if you have any children, you can download Nobio Nobify and you don't need training. Because I, even with 30 minutes of training, an adult can do it. But you don't really need training. Yeah, because it's really, really intuitive. Great, thank you. Thanks. Um, would love to hear what employee engagement looks like. Is this a kind of one and done compliance? Is this, you know, every time a new sales product rolls out, you know, they're looking at it every quarter, just yes. getting a sense of kind of what engagement looks like would be great. 
Awesome question. So um, we basically are, are providing across the entire employee lifecycle, from onboarding to product training to sales to compliance to leadership development and management, so it cuts across. In terms of engagement rates, if we were to compare them to the Digital Learning 1.0, we're 10 to 15x higher, not percent. So um, for us, a really crappy program is 20% engagement, but we normally see 60 to 80%. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's, we think it's awesome. I get sad when it's 20%. Whereas in the 1.0 space, if you, get sing, if you get double digits, like 10, people are super excited. And for me, I'm like, 20, that sucks, guys, come on, it should be 60 to 80. Yeah. And so we regular, we, on average, we see 60 to 80% on enterprise. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect, thank you, Soyoung. Thank, thank you. you.